But a certain Samaritan, being on his journey, came near him, and seeing him was moved with compassion. And going up to him, bound up his, his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and cared for him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It's good to be with all of you. As many of you know, I don't get to do this very much. Most of the time, I'm at seminary with the brothers. And to be honest, excuse me, I don't really do a lot of Sunday Masses. So the prospect of coming here to be with all you is a little bit nerve-wracking. But we're amongst friends, right? So some time ago, I think it was last year, we were at seminary, and a great priest was invited to do a day of recollection. His name's Father Peter John Cameron. He's a Dominican, and he is a professor of homiletics. And as he was giving a conference to the brothers, to the, all the men in formation there, he was talking about this very gospel, the gospel of the Good Samaritan. And at least for me, the center and the climax of this gospel are these very words. When he saw the man who had been beaten by the robbers, he was moved with compassion, moved with mercy. Misericordia motus est, which for us as fathers of mercy is the center of our charism. It's the motto that our founder gave us, to be moved with mercy. And I'm not trying to get all like scientific and heady and scripture scholar here, but there's this Greek word that means all of that, okay? I'm trying to find it here. Splachnitste, which literally means being moved like in your bowels, in your gut. When the Samaritan saw the man, he was moved profoundly at the core of his being with compassion. With compassion. So Father Peter John Cameron's going on about this wonderful stuff. And then he goes, you know, there should be like this religious community that preaches all about this. They should be called the splagnitzomaniacs. And I'm looking, I'm in the very back. I always sit in the back. I'm looking around and I'm tearing my garments. I'm like, this is my community. This is the fathers of mercy. We are the ones who are supposed to be preaching about this heartfelt, tender, compassion and mercy towards those unfortunate, the sinners, the poor, the ones who have been beaten. And yet, you know, sometimes it seems like nobody knows who the heck we are, right? Anyway. But yeah, we just heard the other day at our table reading, the very last, we have this little book of sayings of Father Razan, the very last one, he says something like, my brothers, I want this congregation to be called the Congregation of Mercy for the consolation of the poor and unfortunate. And Jesus says today, go and do likewise. But first, but first, we have to recognize how the church has always kind of interpreted this gospel. Because it's very easy for us to look at it and say, okay, the Good Samaritan treated this person with mercy. We're called to do the same. Excellent. Wonderful. But here's the thing. When God reveals himself to Moses, if we look back, right, we go back to Exodus. I always talk about this. I love it. It's the moment after um, Moses gets the tablets, right? He gets the tablets of the Ten Commandments, which, you know, how often does God do that? It doesn't happen all the time. So he's walking down with the two tablets, and he sees the people adoring a golden calf of all things, right? And he takes those tablets and he throws them to the ground and busts them. And I always go back to the memory, little kid, 
I'm a little kid and I'm watching the Ten Commandments and I see this happen. And I'm like, do you think God's just going to make you another set of tablets? This doesn't happen every day. But sure enough, God makes another set of tablets in his mercy and gives them to Moses. But when he goes up, God reveals himself to Moses. And he proclaims his name and he says, the Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious. And even Pope Francis, he has this book, God's name is mercy. And going back to that word, right? How does God see us? He sees us moved with compassion. That's his love toward us. Now, also at seminary, we had the opportunity to go during Lent. Uh, in the Diocese of Columbus, there's a Greek, I'm sorry, a Melkite Catholic church. Okay? The Melkites, um, I think they trace their roots back to Antioch. And um, the liturgies are actually in English. But there's a priest there, and he invited us out for Lent, and they have their services during the week, and they have what's called the Liturgy of the Pre-Sanctified Gifts, which is like uh, evening prayer with Holy Communion. It was a great experience, right? It's different ways of praying, different chants, very beautiful. We're taking it all in. And in the middle of this service, I was struck by one of the canticles or verses that they were chanting along with the Psalms. And it speaks to our condition in light of this gospel of the Good Samaritan. I'm going to read it for you. My thoughts like thieves have seized me a wretched man. My mind has been robbed and I have been sorely beaten. My soul is wounded, and I am stripped of virtues. I lie naked in the highway of life. The priest saw my pain and hopeless wounds and looked away. The Levite could not bear my groaning and passed me by. But you were pleased to come, O Christ my God not from Samaria, but from the flesh of Mary. In your love for mankind, grant me healing and pour upon me your great mercy. This gets to the core, brothers and sisters. Who is the Good Samaritan? It is our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are the ones on the highway of life, beaten, wounded, tired, in pain, needing of the great mercy and healing and love of Christ our God, who came not from Samaria, but incarnate from the, in the flesh of the Virgin Mary. So important, brothers and sisters. Let's ask the Lord today to help us to receive that mercy from him, heartfelt compassion, if we experience that mercy from our God, brothers and sisters, we will be able to then feel that compassion towards others. We had this great saint this week, Saint Maria Goretti. We know the story, virgin and martyr who resisted temptation, who resisted this young man who was filled with rage and lust, right? And in that rage and lust stabbed her so many times. It's a terrible thing but what mercy she had in herself, right? That experience of mercy she received from God. She knew it, she knew it so well because on her deathbed she said, not only I forgive him, but I want him to be with me in heaven. Think about how wounded that young man was, right? Filled with rage, lust, he could do such a thing. And she treated him with that great compassion, heartfelt mercy, that our Lord displays toward us. So brothers and sisters, I'm preaching this today. This gut health, okay? You know, everything's gut health today. I mean, it's the most important thing in our, in our society, which is, it's, you know, okay, it's a good thing, right? I mean, I need, I need better gut health. But what about the gut health from God, right? 
his infinite mercy, that oil, that wine he pours upon us to heal us, to strengthen us, to give us life. I want to just end today with going back, that same word, that same word. Us fathers of mercy, at the end of every prayer, we finish with the subtum, right? We fry to thy protection, O holy mother of God. So this is like one of the, it's the, I think, most ancient prayer to Our Lady in the history of the church. They found, about 100 years ago, they found this old manuscript in Greek in Egypt. And it's all like cut up in pieces and it's just a little fragment of the prayer itself. And they dated back to uh, third century, so we're talking 200, late 200s, early 300s. And it's very interesting that the Greek translation of that prayer has this very word, beneath thy heartfelt compassion, we fly to thee, O mother of God. Our lady is the mother of mercy. She's the mother of mercy. And she, you know, if we don't believe the Lord's looking at us like that, we know that our lady is nothing but merciful toward us. What else do we need, brothers and sisters? What else do we need? Our Lord, our Lady have given us all of this. Let us receive it from them, believing that they want to heal us, that they want to strengthen us, that they want us to feel at the core of our hearts this mercy and this love for us, that we might be able to bring it to others. Beneath thy, ver thy, beneath thy mercy, we take refuge, O Virgin Mother of God, Disdain not our supplications and our distress, but deliver us from perils, O pure and blessed one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.